Israel's prolonged occupation contain the features of apartheid. We condemn in the strongest term the apartheid policies that Israel operates in the occupied territories. The barbaric aggression uh, against uh, Gaza under siege. This genocidal aggression. Uh, the barbaric um, uh, Israeli aggression on the Gaza Strip. Uh. I therefore give the floor to United Nations Watch. Mr. President, we gather at a perilous moment in world affairs. International borders are trampled and dissolved before our eyes. Masses are killed and exiled. Atrocities are celebrated. The need to appeal to and affirm basic principles of international law and human rights has perhaps never been greater. And so today, with the UN Watch legal brief that has been circulated before you and before all of the distinguished representatives of this chamber in the form of UN document NGO-112, placed on the agenda of today's debate, the community of international law has an opportunity and a choice. It can choose to speak out to defend the international rule of law or allow it to be trampled and dissolved. Last Wednesday, I was invited to meet the Commission of Inquiry on Gaza, appointed by this Council. I informed the Chair, Professor William Shabis, that we would be presenting today's legal brief. It recalls that the international rule of law requires UN fact-finders to be impartial and to be seen as impartial. I told him that while we respected his academic accomplishments, he is legally obliged to recuse himself on account of his prior statements and actions that give rise to the appearance of bias. I reminded Professor Shabis that on 17 July, speaking on the very conflict he is now meant to examine, he told the BBC that Israel is presumptively guilty of war crimes, saying, quote, prima facie, there is evidence of disproportionality in the response that Israel is undertaking. Similarly, in November 2012, speaking of favorite defendants, Professor Shabis declared, quote, My favorite would be Netanyahu in the dock of the International Criminal Court. Mr. President, how can someone one day be a plaintiff, a plaintiff for three decades, and then the next day act as a judge? Our brief, available at ShabisReport.com, details his many other prejudicial statements which give rise to the reasonable apprehension of bias. And that's why legal scholars like Lord David Panic, writing in the Times of London, whom Professor Shabis quotes himself, has called for the same remedy. If justice is to be done and to be seen to be done, the only remedy is for Professor Shabis to step down. Thank you, Mr. President.